Today, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be here, to worship, to honor you. And Father, we just pray that this morning we do exactly that. Father, we share how much we love you through our singing, through our actions, Father, through communion with you. We just pray that you'll take this service as our offering you this morning, Lord. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. We got birthdays, anniversaries? Good.
death and resurrection was supposed to take place. We're going to go back to Isaiah in chapter 53. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, pierced in the side. He was crushed in, by our iniquities, and in the King James Version that reads, he was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. My people, you and I. He was assigned a grave with the wicked. If the Romans had taken him down, he would have been placed in the same grave as the two thieves beside him on either side. In a common grave. So it would be graves with the wicked. And with the witch rich in his death, though he had no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. And with the rich in his death, Joseph of Arimathea was a wealthy man. And he went to Pilate and asked if he could take the body of Christ for a proper burial and place him in a new tomb. So with the rich in his death, he was assigned a grave with the rich. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him or bruise him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities, our iniquities, our sins. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great. He will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. 700 years before Christ was crucified, the Word explained what was going to happen very difficult not to say I believe when the proof is in the word the broken body the blood of Christ come the table is now ready amen <coughs>
He told us to do this in remembrance of him as often as we do. We pray that the Holy Spirit will move in and among us this morning and draw us near to and let us feel your presence and let the glory of your presence rest in this place. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
our heads pray. Heavenly Father, we can thank you for this day of we come together. And, 
And I always wondered as a kid, how do they not know that that's Superman? I mean, if, if Jeff took his glasses off, would you still know it's Jeff? I mean, it's one of those things, but yet for some reason when he took his glasses off and that hat off, he changed. What changed him? Sights in a cape. Phone booth. Phone booth. The phone booth. Someone watched that show. The phone booth is what changed him. Now, for those of you who are young today, you're looking at me saying, what is a phone booth? Um, you don't have those around anymore, but um, he would see danger or see something a wrong being done, and he would immediately run into the phone booth, and I mean in an instant, step out, and he went from this suited, hatted, glass person, and he always took his glasses off before he went to the phone booth, yeah. <clears throat> to this man in tights. Uh, if you look back over here, you can see the, his emblem is being worn there. See it? That's what it looked like if you don't know Superman. So, Joe, you didn't know if Superman's here. Do you have any problems? You see him. Uh, but, but here we are with this superhero who can then do things that Clark Kent couldn't. He could stop bullets. He could outrun a speeding train. He could fly. Now I wonder why Clark couldn't. He had a cape. It's the cape. It's the tights. It's the tights. It's, it's, it's the whole persona of the person. And and Clark got along with Jimmy Olsen and with his newspaper crew. And <laughs> but as Superman, he had a foe. He had a Achilles heel. Now, we only have one person here to watch the show, so we'll ask, what was the Achilles heel? Kryptonite. Kryptonite. With Kryptonite, he became this weak, miserable, little, scrawny, do nothing. Okay? And I'm telling you all this because we're going to talk about prayer today. And prayer and Clark Kent Superman go hand in hand. Because what he shows us in that show is prayer. And the power of prayer. You see, as we go through the scriptures, we're going to see and read all kinds of things about what prayer can do and what prayer was meant to do. I mean, we have a power source. We don't have a phone booth. But most of us have a place that we go or that we're at that we tap in to that power. Much like Clark, Clark Kent becoming Superman, Tracy could become this ultra-human power source in this world. You see, it, it's the power source of God that, that runs through us. It's Him working through us, not us doing the work. We're just the what? The tool, the vessel. You see, when I'm talking up here, I'm, I'm not talking my words, they're His words. It's what God wants us to know. It's what, and I can't explain it, when I wake up and go to look for a sermon, you open up your Bible and there it is. And 99% of the time when I open up my Bible and see here's, here's what we're speaking on, it's because I've had something that last week or so come up that that scripture speaks to. This week we're speaking on prayer and the power of prayer because 
There are people here, here, in our phone booth, that question its validity. <coughs> Who is that? Who questions the validity of prayer and the power that comes with it? It's okay, you can raise your hand. You ever doubt it? You're sitting here and you doubted it. You questioned it, you're like, he's not going to answer my prayer. You ever say those words? You ever think that? You see, because this building might be our phone booth. This might be where we only get our power. I really pray it's not. I pray during the week you have a place you go and, and time that you spend with God. But for some people, this is it. And they walk through this door and they plug in to the source and they're wanting to get enough power for the whole week. How does that work? At what point in the week do you run out of power? <laughs> lunch time. I might make it to lunch. or I mean... It's something we have to do all the time. Clark Kent didn't just become Superman once a day. He became Superman every time there was a wrong. Every time that there was something going on. I mean, if you watch the show, in the show, how interesting would the show be if he turned to Superman once? You know, the, the whole idea of the show is that he can change the Superman and change back to Clark Kent and a telltale sign that Jimmy Olsen and never, Lois Lane never got was when he walked in the room, what was Clark Kent doing every time just after Superman left? All right, I'm going to have to get some of the shows and show them on the big screen here. He's either A... 25% of the time, 30% of the time, putting his glasses back on. Or B, the bigger telltale, fixing his tie. Every show. If you watched it, did you, you notice that? You remember it? He's either fixing the tie or putting the glasses back on. As he becomes back to Clark. What is your superpower? Prayer. We want to look at the book of James. The book of James and, and read a little bit about prayer there. Book of James chapter 5 starting with verse 13. James 5 13. It reads like this, Is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is anyone of you sick? He should call the elders in the church to pray over him and anoint him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Uh, what we want to focus on there is that when do we pray? All the time. All the time. It says, it says, if you are in trouble, pray. If you're happy, rejoice, pray, sing songs. Is any one of you sick? Pray and let the church pray for you. I mean, prayer is a tool that we have. It's a power source that we have. It's something we, we should use, not just Sunday morning. 
not just when we see something happening. You see, in our lives, we need to be Superman 24-7. Because our kryptonite, sin, Satan, will do whatever it takes to tear us down. How many of you can face this world on your own? Well, all of you can. How many of you will succeed on your own? You know, we've come to a realization in our lives that we need what? Jesus. Jesus. We need Christ. Without Christ, how then do we get free from our sin? You see, I look at Clark Kent, mild manner man, as they say. And what is he? Sinner. And he enters the phone booth, he enters his prayer room, he enters his change room, and he comes out as what? Superman. Superman. That can defeat what? Anything. Anything. There's only one thing that can pull him down. Now it's interesting. As Superman, did he run to Kryptonite? He what? He stayed away from it. He avoided it. As Christians, we plug in, we get energized, we get Christ, we get all these things. And how many of us run to our Kryptonite? <clears throat> Don't we? So when you watch this show, you have to learn something. Avoid that which can tear you down. Avoid sin. Avoid those temptations of the devil. So that you remain strong and do the things that you're meant to do in God. I mean, there's a verse here that says, Therefore confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The prayer of what kind of man? Righteous. righteous. Meaning what? The prayers of the man, woman, humankind, that's plugged in to the power source and remains there is effective. We know this. Sin separates us from God. It renders us Basically powerless, like kryptonite does super. And only when we return to the power source, or only when we ask for forgiveness, only when we repent of that, get away from it, are we able to then become again what God planned for us to be. So what does prayer do? How do we do prayer? Prayer is meant to be persistent. What does it mean? Pray without ceasing. ceasing. That means stay plugged in, constant and continually. Luke 18, 1 says, <coughs> that tells us that now he was telling them a parable to show them that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Luke 11, 9 is where we find the promise that ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. Each of those verbs are there in a present tense telling us that if we do it, it's ours. How? Righteous. If we approach Him full of sin and living a sinful life and doing those things and praying those things, what are we? Hypocrites? Not, not living it? I mean, we've got to do it right. And so we look at it and it's like, okay, so if I want to do this, keep asking keep knocking, keep seeking. That's the persistence in prayer. Now I had an instance in my life, I have a lot of instances, but there's an instance I shared with you all with my brother Terry. How many times did we pray for him? Once? Oh, all the time. Our, our, 
prayers that God would do, do what he, His will would be in His life and change people through it. And we gave you updates and different things, and we continue to pray for that. We were persistent in our prayers to God for that thing. And, and not just Him, that's just an example I have, but when people here are sick, we're persistent in our prayers. When people are hurting, we're persistent in our prayers. Downcast, persistent in our prayers. John's been having eye troubles, persistently on our prayer list, praying about his eyes. You know, I can go around the room and all of you have been on that prayer list at some time or other. Jennifer with her, her ailments and her tests and everything going up. Persistently in our prayers. For what? For God to do what He can do. For us to do it? No. For God through us. Through our prayers. Through our efforts to do that. So we're persistent in it. Prayer is meant to be passionate. How many of you are passionate about your prayers? Passionate. In order to be passionate, it has to mean something to us. We're passionate in prayer when it comes to us. We're passionate in prayer when it comes to man, our kids, aren't we? <coughs> We're passionate when it when it how passionate are we in our prayers for uh, Columbine that was celebrated 18 years on Friday. How passionate are we about other things like that? I mean, Dawn said it, they had an issue happen at her school and the boy was still there and she said to the boy, you know what? Hang in there. Because in a few days or a week or so or two weeks, Something else is going to happen, and everybody at school is going to forget about this. You ever see that happen in life? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see something happen, and it's like, oh, and then we're right back to life. Why does it? Why does it fade so quick? It didn't personally touch us, did it? I mean, it was, there was a shooting across the state at a school, and it was kind of like, and for a few days it was like, you know what? What's the name of the school? Parkland. Parkland. Huh? Parkland. Well, actually, I couldn't recall that. I thought it was Stephen something. It was Marjorie Stone and Douglas. Marjorie Stone and Douglas? But, but, Parkland was the town. But, but, you know, some of those things just fade from us. Because it didn't personally, but if it happened, here, how would, it, how would our prayers differ? See, passionate in prayer. There was an author, S.D. Gordon, <coughs> who, wrote a, who wrote a book called The Quiet Moment, talking about prayer. He says, how much prayer, how much did prayer mean to Jesus? It was not only his regular habit, but his resort in every emergency. However, slight or serious, when perplexed, he prayed. When hard pressed by work, he prayed. When hungry for fellowship, he found it in prayer. He chose his associates and received his messages upon his knees. If tempted, he prayed. If criticized, he prayed. If fatigued in body or wearied in spirit, he had a recourse that was unfailing of a habit, he prayed. Prayer brought him unmeasured power at the beginning of his life and kept the flow unbroken and undiminished throughout his life. There was no emergency, no difficulty, no necessity, no temptation that would ever yield to his life in prayer. Now how passionate was Jesus with prayer? Luke 3.1, we see at his baptism while he was praying, the heavens were opened. Passionate prayer could open the heavens to you. Luke 6.12 says, as he called his disciples, he spent the whole night in prayer, passionately asking for direction of whom. In Luke 9.29, at his transfiguration, while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different. 
and his clothes became white and gleaming. Passionate prayer enables us to experience the glory of the Father. John 17, in, in his high priestly prayer, Pastor prayer impacts the lives of others as he prayed for us. Matthew 26, 39, in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see his passionate prayer poured out on the ground in sweat drops of blood. How many of us are passionate in our prayer? And our prayer, not just for us, but for others. To really take on their hurt, their feelings, to, to magnify their joys. How many of us really do that for others? We, we put out a prayer list every week. We, we set them on the counter. Midweek, I come in and pick up what's left of the prayer list and throw them in garbage. Now, I don't know how many are printed, but I know this, there's more people here than prayer list printed. How passionate are we for the people of our own congregation to pray for their needs that have been listed? To include them into our lives and to be, to be persistent about praying for them and passionate in what we ask for them. It's prayer that changes lives. I say this over and over and over. I don't and can't change your life. I am Tracy. I am a man. I am a sinner. I have no great power of prayer. And prayer enables who to work? God. Sometimes it's God on His own, and sometimes it's God through us that can do that work. But it's prayer that enables us to talk to the Father, to converse. Prayer is meant to be passionate, it's meant to be persistent. Prayer is meant to be full of thanksgiving. I mean, how many of you have something to be thankful for this morning? I mean, I got out of bed. Be thankful. I had a warm shower. Be thankful. I had air conditioning to cool me off after the warm shower. Praise God. There's nothing like getting out of a warm shower into a humid hot house. I was able to get into a vehicle, turn a key, and it started. That's a praise. There, there was one day this week that I got into my vehicle when I was out somewhere and turned the key in. Nothing. It's quite a feeling to be sitting there on the side of a road going, now what? Because if you really know me, you know this. Not a mechanic. <laughs> Not. Opened up the hood. Here, here's my reaction. I, I didn't know this much. One of two things was wrong. A, it wasn't firing. Or B, fuel wasn't flowing. One of the two. Because when you turn it, it cranked. But nothing. Now, I happened to be at a place where some people were doing some clearing. We asked them, hey, you got that big machine there. Could you pull us? I was where I shouldn't be with a truck that shouldn't work. Could you pull me out of here and get me out to pavement somewhere where people can come and help me and pull it home or do something? And he said, well, I'll do better than that. He got his radio and he went, and in like three minutes, this John Deere cart pulls up full of tools. This guy who says, hey, someone need a mechanic? I'll answer you. You know, what I didn't tell you is, when the car did that, my immediate thought was like, you say a prayer, God, something. And this guy takes his cover off where there's fuses or breakers or... <laughs> And he, does, and he does this. 
Turn the key. Turn the key. Turn the key. All right, it's this one. What? And he pulls that thing out, takes the cap off it, and it was kind of a big one. And he takes the cap off it and he says, oh, look, these are burnt and this is all corroded. Oh. And he reaches in his pocket, pulls out a piece of paper and starts cleaning it. Would I have thought of that? I wouldn't have taken the cover off the thing. I didn't know that the cover came off this thing. <laughs> and he puts it back in and he says, turn the key. Yeah, probably your fuel pump. Another guy pulls up in a different car and he says, no, 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 it's that. He says, you tried to clean this up, but look down here in the bottom, look at the prongs. They're, they're burnt. This one's short. It's not even reaching where it needs to reach. He said, so, here you go. So I jump in another vehicle where I had my son come get me, <clears throat> ran to the auto parts store to get the part. Auto zone. I don't know why, but every time I go to this auto zone, they don't have it. But they'll send you to the store that does. In all their stores, one. One had the part. Cape Coral Parkway and Chiquita. <laughs> so I take off and I'm running there. My phone rings and everyone back here is like, where are you at? Because <clears throat> I was at the Civic Center. And, and they, it should have been a 10 minute trip. And I said, well, I had to go here and here. I ran the park back and here's, here's the great thing. They put it in, turn the key. Nothing. Oh. And the second guy that came up, he says, I told you, I told you. I said, you told who? What? I wasn't here. He says, that fuse. It's yellow. It has a 15 on it. We pulled it out. He looked at it and says, yeah, it's bad. You have to go get one. <laughs> Out of the clear blue, comes pulling in this big pickup truck. The guy gets out. I recognize him. I had two weeks ago got a gator out of his pond. And he says, I saw your truck sitting here with the hood up, but I knew it wasn't good. What do you need? I need one of these. Ah, he goes into his truck, pulls out this big tackle box like thing, opens it up. He's got all of them. And he says to me, take three in case it blows. We put that fuse in, starts right up. Turns out it was not the $38 piece I went and bought. <laughs> but the 58 cent fuse. <laughs> but during this whole time, I'm telling you this because during this whole time, I prayed when it happened, and I'm praying. When that guy says fuel pump, I'm praying, no, 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 no. I just had the fuel pump changed like seven months ago. And on Toyota, they don't put the fuel pump where you can get to it. You gotta drop the gas tank and go inside the gas tank and pull it out. You have to drain all the gas out. I just filled the truck. It was one of these like, no. And so I'm praying and praying and praying. And it was one of those that you could instantly see the prayers answer. The odds that, did you know the Civic Center has a full time account there? The Civic Center? The Civic Center. I didn't know that. There he was. And, and you know how busy he was that day? Not. Because they had no events going on, and all the equipment they were clearing along their ponds with was rented. So he has all their tractors tuned up and ready to go, and he was just kind of. And he was available. He says, man, on a, on a day where there's stuff, he says, I, I couldn't have done this. Her answer. To know that he could take his finger and touch those things and know which one it was. Her answer. To know that a store actually had it, because they were saying there, oh, Toyota. Oh. Maybe the dealership. And I said, no, AutoZone. It's right here. I had to go a long distance to get it, but it was there. 
prayer answered. For the second man to come up when the first man was done, when it wouldn't start, for the second man to come up and no. Yeah, two mechanics at the Civic Center. What's the odds? For him to find that fuse. And there were prayers said throughout the entire thing to get us to this point. I mean, we died at the side of the pond at 9.30. They finally had us up and running by 1.30 because it was a trip to get the parts and stuff. But it, it could have been so, so much worse. I was wanting them to move my truck so I could get a tow. What would the tow have cost? <laughs> to take it to a mechanic garage, what would the mechanic garage charge me to <coughs> figure this thing out? And they might have ordered the part delivered to them and got there. Like this auto zone said, well, I can, get, I can order that part from them. They'll have it here at 530. In my head, I'm knowing. 5.30. Civic Center locks its gates at 5. Uh, that's not going to work for me. All those different things to see. God works if we if we let Him. I mean, to have all that, those people that will think, to have the guy that I took a gator out two weeks ago come by and see our truck and think enough to turn around, pull in, and see if we needed help. And to have the right part in his truck. I mean, you can't just make this stuff up. It's God who sees you through and takes you through these things. If we're faithful, and, I mean, it was a constant prayer time of, hey, I got this and this. And that's just an example. I mean, I'm sure you have stories that show God moving in your life. God changed things. God supplying things that you're needing. Now, part of this we said is persistence, passion, thankfulness. Man, I was so thankful all day long for all those things. Patience. Prayer sometimes takes patience. Sometimes they're not answered as quick as they were that day for me. Sometimes we pray and we have to wait. My, my brother Terry, four and a half years we prayed as a congregation. Did you know it was that long? Four and a half years. To finally get an answer. You know, we prayed God heal. Four and a half years later, finally heal. With the ultimate heal. Sometimes we have to wait. I, I know women in our church here and at Northside that prayed how many years for their husbands to get them in church? Jo Joanne Jumps, who just moved north, I mean, prayed for Ralph. How many times did she ask for prayer? How many times did we pray for Ralph and that? Uh, Judy for a while with Bill. Uh, I mean, I can go through these people and just show you the number of times we prayed for these people to get them. Were they answered immediately? They answered within a month, well, within a year. Joanne was on, I think the last time I talked to her was year 18 with her and Ralph. Praying. I mean, he came for a while. Maybe that was our problem. He started coming for a while and we, we stopped praying. And when he faded away, I mean, I mean, we need to be persistent in our prayers, passionate in our prayers, patient in them that God will answer in due time. Those things that we request. But when we look at prayer as a whole, we have to look at our lives and say, okay, how do I do it? Where do I start? Because there's some of you in here that don't have a prayer life. Well, where did you start when you started dating? Where did you start? Gary, when you saw Becky, first thing you asked her was to marry you? Don't shake your head yes. Don't not shake your head yes. It was not. 
the dough. You know, it took what? Four years. Four years. Of what? Working. Of persistence? Yes. Of patience? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, of faithfulness for times given? Of, I mean, it started with a question, did it not? Did it not start with, hey, Becky, you want to go out? I asked him. Yeah. Hey, Gary, how about a, hey, Gary, how about a Coke? Something. I mean, look at your lives. Look, go way back, go way back. Bud and Marcella, where did it start? She was another guy when I first saw her. Oh. <laughs> the relationship started somewhere with something, whether it was a question or a statement or, or hey, you look good today, or something. Where do you start off with prayer with God? With something. And a great place to start off, God, thank, thank you for today. That my feet hit the floor and I got up. And then go from there and share with them. As if it was a relationship that you want, because it is a relationship. And His desire is for you to share that. Prayer is where we share with Him those things. Where we're persistent on asking for things and passionate in, in deciding things and thankfulness and the patience that it takes to wait on Him sometimes to answer. <coughs> and a huge part of prayer is listening. You can be passionate, you can be persistent, you can be thankful, you can be patient. It's going to take that to listen for the answer that comes. God will answer every prayer. It may not be the answer your mind has received at once. It might be exactly what you want. It might be a mechanic with a car and everything to get you on the road. It might be wait. I got something better. How many of you are better off today with the person you're in a relationship with than the person you first thought in high school you needed to be with? I mean, it's just there. And had we been patient and persistent, sometimes we wouldn't have the heartache we have in life waiting on that. But we're human and we want what we want when we want it. And we want it most of the time now. Clark Kent got his strength in the phone booth when it was needed to take care of an issue. Look at this world. Look at the issues all around us. When do we need prayer? Yeah. Now. How often do we need it? Always. Always. Consistent and persistent. To take care of this life and these needs. To get us through, to keep us away from our kryptonite, to keep us on the road towards God, so that we one day could live with Him forever and eternity. That's our goal. That's our purpose as a church. To help each other out in getting there. And if you're here this morning and you've never accepted Christ, you don't know that power. You don't know what He can give you. We want, we want you to have that. And if you're interested in giving your life to Christ, I mean, we want to talk to you about that. We want to share that with you. We want you to plug into the power source that we have that with the ability to pray and, and converse and have a relationship with Him that He can work through us to change us, but not just change us, but by changing us, changing others. As they see Him living in us. Maybe you're here this morning and you've got a phone book. And you put it on when you think you need it. 
and you take it off when you think you go. But sin is always at your tail. Satan is always trying to trip you up. And we need to stay in our strengths. We're different than Superman. We always need Jesus. We always need His power and His mercy and His love. We always need Him to guide us and direct us to where we need to be. We always need Him in all things. If you're here this morning and He is your all in all, you're constantly and consistently in Him, and keep living it. But if you're like me where sometimes I struggle and sometimes I trip, sometimes I fall and I need Him to pick me up, I need to work on staying plugged in consistently, constantly. We have a decision to make this morning. For some of you, it's a decision for the first time in your life to choose Him. For the biggest bulk of us, it's a decision in our lives to finally, once for all, get plugged back in and stay plugged. To not run to our kryptonite. When we, think it, when we think it looks better than what's going on. To stay in Him, to love Him and be His. So this morning we're going to uh, have, the, have the invitation sung to us, right? And uh, we'll stand like we always do in case someone needs to get out of the aisle. And uh, pay attention to the Word, pay attention to things. It's also dealing with prayer and sustaining of our lives and what's there. So as we stand and as the song sung to us, if you have a decision to make,